Welcome back, Cam to Catholic. Oh, man, it has been a minute since we've had a flip, right? But I got three of these bad boys uploaded in one day. So I'm pretty impressed with myself, all things considered. But we did a lot of reviewing today in class again. You know the nature of a flipped classroom, right? Um, we got up to the point of the First Crusade, right? Talking about how it was established to try and take back the Holy Land, even though the Holy Land was never really taken in the first place. Um, so the Crusades are going to be launched by the Pope. He's going to call them a pilgrimage. The First Crusade is a light victory, mostly just nobles leading poor people in four large factions led by uh, leading crusading knights. And they established four forts. Now, forts can also be used as like states, all right? As in states, what I, they are called uh, Edessa, Antioch, Jerusalem, and Nicaea, all right? So, Nicaea to meet ya. <laughs> so, uh, what ends up being happening is they like establish like a little state, kind of like, like a United States kind of establishment, like a state of Nicaea, Edessa, Antioch, Jerusalem. Oh, actually, no, Nicaea is not one of them. Tripoli is the other one. Tripoli is right here. It goes Edessa, Antioch, Tripoli, and Jerusalem, all right? So, now, the thing is, though, as they establish these states, even under the pleading of, like, many Muslim leaders, as well as Jewish leaders, uh, the Crusaders are going to massacre Muslims, Jews, men, women, children along the way. It ends up being a very, very big problem. Um, it wasn't something pushed by the church right there. That was something pushed by nobles, as well as the poor that were marching in this crusade. That wasn't actually pushed on by the Catholics, as, which, as, ironically enough, they get blamed for it a lot, but it necessarily wasn't Urban II didn't tell them to do that, right? So he said, go march against, uh, go on a pilgrimage to, like, spread the good news, I guess, right? So now, this destroyed, though, the relationship between Christians and the rest of the Islamic countries, which we are still to this day feeling the ripple effects of. Many Muslim countries actually still refer to American involvement in their socioeconomic political structure as a crusade, right? And it actually led to the first version of the jihad, right? So we're literally dealing with these backlashes of these wars to this day. So the first crusade was very simple. Um, it's the crusaders actually set up these four states and they won. And it's really the only crusade that Christians ever actually won. Now the second crusade is going to come into play whenever they're under threat. Okay. Now these also happened for a long time. The crusades went from like 1090 all the way up to like ooh, the 1240s, I think. 1240s, late 1240s, uh, well, late 1200s. And then, so you're talking about like almost over 100 years of war, right? Um, now, the Second Crusade, though, the Muslims are going to take control of one of these states. And what they actually take control of is the Edessa state, right? And the Edessa state, there's Tripoli state, and there's the Jerusalem state, there's the Antioch state. Uh, the Edessa state, right here. So the Edessa state they actually take control of, which actually leads to them having control of the northernmost like uh, estate, right? So, and what that group was, they were actually called the Seljuk Turks, right? Now, the crazy part about the Second Crusade is it was actually a small benefit to the Christians, right? So they actually send a huge force, the biggest crusading force that had ever been seen to try and take this state back, but they actually, it was a massive failure, huge, huge failure. But the Christians retained control of Jerusalem. Now, whether you call that a victory or not, it's really up to you because they actually lost one of their original states and it was a massive failure. Now, the Third Crusade is going to come into play between two particular guys, right? This guy right here, which we'll talk about in a second, and then this man, right? The Third Crusade actually was started because of the crusading state of Jerusalem, right? So the state of Jerusalem down here began to try and attack this area of the Fatimid Egyptian, okay? So there were Muslims right here in Egypt, and the original crusaders from Jerusalem decided in the Third Crusade, look, we'll attack Egypt to try and take control of it. If we take control of Egypt, we actually will break off the northern African trade routes of the Muslims, we'll hurt them economically, we'll actually be able to retain better control of Jerusalem. Well, in this attack, the uncle of this man dies, right? That's Saladin, right? Saladin is the sultan of Egypt following the death of his uncle, very, very prideful Muslim, and actually considered the attack of the Crusaders to be an attack on Muslims and also on Egyptians directly, right? So he's an amazing general, and he attacks Jerusalem, and he begins to try and gain control of that area. Now, he also takes his entire country back. Because these crusaders that came into Egypt, he actually forced them all the way back out again. And was on the doorstep of Jerusalem and took parts of it back. Now, crusading knights were sent to defend Jerusalem and destroy Egypt. Unfortunately, though, what's going to end up happening is this guy is going to come into play. Everybody imagines him looking like this, but he doesn't. And his name is King Richard I, also known as Richard the Lionheart. Right? So... Many nobles answered the call to the crusade, but none were as strong as Richard I. He was actually the king of England at the time, a.k.a. Richard the Lionheart, right? So he was also the king during uh, the Robin Hood stories. So the fighting of the crusades is going to continue. 
Richard the Lionheart, Saladin, the Egyptian general. They respect each other to a huge amount. And they attempted peace, but Richard ended up having to go back to England because the they actually never fully recaptured the areas of Jerusalem that they lost, right? Now, we're not talking about Jerusalem, just the city. We're talking about Jerusalem, the whole state, okay? So they ended up losing a lot of land in that Jerusalem area as well. So they ended up losing that one. Oh, and that right there, that's the Dome of the Rock. That's actually a very, very prominent Muslim artifact that's actually in Jerusalem to this day. So eventually, in the Fourth and later Crusades, the Jerusalem itself, the city, is going to fall into the hands of the Muslims, and as well as the Muslims will then begin to start attacking Constantinople constantly to try and take the Byzantine out as well. So Crusaders are going to attack Constantinople, and it's going to lead to a massive amount of disorganization, and a lack of strong leadership causes the Fourth Crusade, which is another failure, right? Five more Crusades possibly followed, but the Muslims remained in control of the Holy Land following the Third Crusade, right? So... Continuing forward. Um, so, there was a lot of... Ooh, I gotta tell you. Write, just write down the Children's Crusade. Don't write down anything else. All right? I gotta, I'm gotta. i gonna tell you that story tomorrow. You don't need to write that down. All right? The Children's Crusade. Well, let's talk really, really quickly in this flip to finish up. And we'll talk about the other stuff, fun stuff on Friday. The economic effects of this crusade and also little known facts about it. Right? So, the effects of this crusade are actually threefold. Economically, trade and trade goods in Europe actually increased. Also, the funding for the Catholic Church was at an all-time high, right? So it brought in a heavy amount of like funding for the Catholic Church, also brought in a heavy amount of trade. There was a new interest in travel and learning, and because many of the Muslim conquering areas actually did not destroy Christian artifacts, they kept them. And they actually translated them into their native languages from scrolls and scripture. They actually took control of many of Aristotle's earliest works that were being held in the Byzantine, and actually held on to them and kept them safe leading up to the Renaissance, right? So trade, trade goods, intelligence kind of went forward, even though it was at the cost of a lot of lives, right? Political changes. Some lords are not going to return to their land, which is leading the kings to start growing in power, right? So they're going to take land, giving the kings even more power. So the kings are becoming more and more powerful due to these crusades, right? Social changes. Christians are going to see Jews and Muslims a lot as enemies, as well as the Muslims saw the Christians as invaders. So it really, really disrupted the social balance between the, all the big faiths, right? So now, a couple other things, though. Odd things about the Crusade is, first of all, before the First Crusade, nobles constantly fought for land. Many historians believe that Urban II, the one who called the First Crusade at the Council of Claremont, actually was just trying to unite Europe against a common enemy, right? To try and, like, extend his papal suprematic power over the rest of the uh, entire continent, right? Now, also, Pope Urban never claimed the Crusades to be a holy war. He actually sent Christians on a pilgrimage, hoping the Islams would attack, the Islamic community would attack and actually cause a war, possibly. But also, it was a big, big money grab as well, a lot of people believe, right? It actually did increase the funding for the Catholic Church. And then lastly, most of the Crusades were actually nobles who were leading bands of poor people. Very, very few of them were really big trained knights, like we've talked about in class. But that's it, because tomorrow we're going to get into this weird family tree, and we're going to get into the Hundred Years' War a little bit, all right? So... Don't let me forget to tell you the crew the don't let me forget to tell you the children's crusade. All right. And we'll talk more about this stuff tomorrow. I'll see y'all later. If you want another little deeper knowledge of the crusades, uh, John Green has a great video on it on Crash Course World History. So I will talk to y'all about that later. Maybe I'll link that in the description of this. But y'all have a great evening. I'll see you tomorrow.